Hello everyone, this is Rushida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on another callback function in TensorFlow called Model Checkpoint. This gives you an option to save your model while training and use it later. We will show you in code how to use it, but before that, a small introduction on why it is useful. So it is especially useful when you have a big data set and it takes long time to train the model. If your training stops due to some kind of unexpected circumstances like power outage or some kind of connection problem, you don't want to start from the scratch again. So it is helpful if you can save your model while training so that any kind of circumstances you can start the training where you left off. Sometimes one model can be useful for multiple cases. Say you trained a model for some image classification and later you can use that model weights and retrain for some different image classification problem. Also, we keep getting new data all the time. So if you have your model weights saved, you can only train on the new data on top of the old model weights. That will save a lot of time. And we will see in a future video how we can train on an existing model. Let's dive into the code. I'm using MNIST and dataset that you can load directly from TensorFlow library. I saved the model and compile method in create model definition so that you can call it whenever necessary. It will come in very handy for us because we are going to try several different ways of model checkpoint or saving the model. I am defining here a file path, the training one that's going to be our folder where the model will be saved. You can see there is no training folder here. Once we will run the model, it will be created for us. And here we are calling the model checkpoint method. The first parameter is the file path. And the file path, this check one that I already defined here, I'm passing that here as a first parameter, verbose one, it simply will return or give you a message that model is saved. Save weights only equals to true. That means we are not going to save the whole model. We are going to save only the weights. If you want, you can put is false and it will save. If you put false, it will save the whole model, which we do not need at the moment. And save frequency, epoch. That means after every epoch is going to save the model. In model.fit, x train, y train, the training data, we will train it for 10 epochs, the validation data, and then callbacks, you pass the CB callback function that we defined here. This is the CB. Okay, let's run it. I didn't run this one first. The model training is going on. And if I can show you the training folder is created. Okay, model training is done. You go in the training one and you can see here is the file where we have all the weights saved. As we mentioned, save frequency epoch. After every epoch, it saved the model and it kept overriding it after every epoch. So after we finished all 10 epochs, the final weight we have here is actually the model weights after the 10th epoch. Let's see how we can call or load the weights now and use it. To do that, I'm calling the create model method here again. And then model one.load weights, you pass the directory or the file path where we saved the model. Right? We saved the model in this file path. So now we load the weights from that file path into the model one. If you call the evaluate method in model one, because model one already have all the weights now, and you pass x train x test or x test y test if you do that, and you will get the loss and accuracy. So you can see this loss and accuracy we got simply because val accuracy and val loss it is coming from x test and y test. Right, and we are testing on X test and Y test, we should get the val loss and val accuracy. Next, we will see how we can get the weight after every epoch so that it doesn't overwrite 
we get one wait file for every epoch. In that case, here I will create training 2. Actually, I will not create. Once you start training, it will create itself. And then you pass this parameter epoch so that you see which epoch the data is coming from. And then as usual, the rest of the parameter will be the same. Only this time the file path, I'm going to put this one. And then now create model again so that we can start over. And then as usual, everything is the same, except for this time I'm going to put CB2 as the callback method. Okay, let's start training and we will see. Well, model training is done. Now let's see. You see, while training, training two has been created. And how nice. After each epoch, there is the wait. Let's see how we can call it now. So I'm creating the model again using the create model method. And now here is the method called latest checkpoint. So if you give the directory name here, so directory name, you can see we created the directory using this check to, right? Check to directory path the directory name check to, it's going to be give you the directory name. So if you pass the directory name here and call the latest checkpoint method, it is going to give you the most recent file in that directory. And then, Call load waste method on model 2 and pass this most recent as parameter and then model.evaluate x test y test or if you want you can do x train y train and we'll get loss and accuracy and you see it works so we can further improve it now look here we have simply the epoch the number of epoch epoch 1 2 3 if you want, you can use a parameter. Okay, here I want to see the accuracy in every epoch on the name of the file itself. I am passing accuracy dash accuracy 0.2f. That means it's going to give you the two numbers after decimal and then it will save it in the file name. Okay, everything else is the same. Only thing is, you give this file path now, check 3, and run for epoch 10. Well, model training is done again. Let's see, this time it created training 3 folder for us, and you can see on the file name, after every epoch, what is the accuracy it shows? After first epoch, there is 91%. And after second epoch, it was 95%. After third epoch, 97% accuracy. It shows very clearly and it is very useful. And you already know how to call it and use the model. So I'm just going to dive into the next method. So next time, I'm going to do is save frequency equals to 100. This 100 is the batch size. So instead, of saving the model after every epoch, we will save it after a batch size of 100. So there will be several models saved or several weights files saved of in every epoch. So let's try again. And you can see we are creating training four folder this time. You see in between different point it is saving the model. So if we check now, training four folder, we have so many files here. This time we actually used loss. This loss, the training loss, you can see that for each epoch, several model is saved. We save the weight file for a batch size of 100. And lastly, this is another one. Here I'm again adding accuracy. So this time I'm adding save best only. That means it will only take the best model. To find the best model, it will monitor accuracy at more auto. Here I'm using the metric accuracy. The accuracy should keep going up in every epoch, right? 
or every batch or every step. Again, if we would use the loss, validation loss or training loss, it should go down. In mode, you should mention that. But if you put auto, the model checkpoint method is smart enough to actually catch that if it should go up or down. So let's start training. Okay, model training is done. And let's say in training five folder and it saved the best method, sorry, best weights. So it saved the best weights in each batch and we got several files for each epoch. And that's all for today. I wanted to show you how you can use the model checkpoint and save your model while you train your TensorFlow model, which will come in very handy for you, I'm sure. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.